Welcome to Linux for Hackers. And everyone, because everyone needs to learn Linux. In episode one, we learned a lot. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. But that sucker just scratched the surface. In episode two, which is right now, we're going deeper. We're going crazy. No time to waste. Let's start right now. Now, just like episode one in the series, you're getting a free Linux lab to play with right now. All thanks to my sponsor, Hack the Box Academy. So if you haven't already signed up, link below, I walk you through it in episode one. So go check that out. And before we get started, have you hacked the YouTube algorithm today? Like this video, subscribe, comment, notification bell. Let's hack YouTube today. Ethically, of course. Anyways, yeah, let's get started. All right, before we get started, we'll need two things. First, coffee. Check, got it. Next, we'll need our lab, our Linux lab, free from Hack the Box Academy. Go ahead and get logged in right here. And then we'll jump back into our Linux Fundamentals course and launch our Pwn box here at the very bottom. Go ahead and click on Start Instance. Boom. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about here, like what free Linux lab? Go back to episode one. I show you how to set this up. Anyways, let's keep going. And then we'll click Interact to launch our Linux box and the browser, which is crazy. Still so cool to me. Anyways, let's go. Now in episode one, we covered that you don't experience Linux like this. No, no, no. We're going to launch our Linux terminal right here. Go ahead and do that. It's that green or yellow icon right there. Ah, oh, we're home. Yes. Now real quick, who am I? Go ahead and type that in real quick. Who am I? No spaces. Just type that in, hit enter. That's our first command today. <laughs> Just a quick little fun command that tells us who we are who we are logged in as, and I am user 86527. Who are you? Comment below. Just in case in Linux you ever have an identity crisis, you're like, man, who am I? You can find out real quick. Moving on. So last time in episode one, we learned a few things like, hey, ls, our list command will tell us all the stuff in our current working directory. We also learned cd. We can change directories to something else where we're not, <laughs> like cd desktop. Now we're in desktop. If I type in PWD, it'll also tell me where I am. I'm in desktop because <laughs> we just went there. And we even saw that if we type in CD space dot dot, it'll take us back. So now we're back where we started. And, but if we keep going, CD dot dot, CD dot dot, we go back and back and back until we can't go back anymore, which is where we're at right now. Forward slash the root. If I type in PWD, that's where we are the root of the file system. That's where it all starts and that's where we're starting our video today. And I'm gonna clear my screen real quick just by typing in clear. Hey, another command, just type in clear, it'll clear your terminal. So it's nice and clean, like a dry erase board, clear. Now what's here? What's at the root of the file system? Let's see, go ahead and type in ls right now, ls. Ooh, a bunch of stuff, <laughs> let's find out what it is. But before we do that, I wanna get one big idea across to you real quick. This will help you understand things as we go forward. Everything, and I mean everything, and Linux is a file, literally everything. Like configuration, like your network settings, things like your IP address and all that interface stuff, it's a file. Devices, like your hard drives and your printers and your CD-ROMs, all files. They are represented in a file in Linux. Now even more shocking and crazy, the commands we use, they're also files. LS and all the commands we just learned, they're files. What, you don't believe me? Let me show you. Let's jump in there. <laughs> I'll show you where they live. This first directory right here, our bin directory. I feel like I'm calling him Ben. Hi, Ben. Let's jump in there real quick. Let's jump into Ben. That's weird. Anyways, <laughs> so we'll do CD bin to jump in there. And we're there. By the way, bin stands for binaries. You know, computer speak. And inside the bin folder or directory are the command binaries. Let's take a look inside. Let's type ls to list all the contents and whoa, <laughs> that was a lot. And here are a lot of the commands you'll end up using in Linux. In fact, within the bin folder are the essential command binaries. So let's scroll up and let's let's find ls, like it's here in the ls. Let me, let me scroll up there. Ah, there he is, ls. That sucker is a file. The command you use to list files is itself a file, right? <laughs> now, if this is a file, we should be able to bust it open and see what's inside, right? Yes, we can. Let's do that. It's new command time. So let me show you this command. First, I'm gonna clear things out by typing in clear, or I can actually do control L to clear. Yeah, nice and clear. This new command we have is cat, C-A-T. That's it. Cat stands for con cat innate. 
Did I spell that right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> and like any cat, this command will take a file and just throw it up on your terminal. And the output. Let's try it. Let's cat ls. Cat ls. Bah! <laughs> it's a lot of spit up there. Now, do you understand any of this? Because if you do, you might be a robot. Where's my CAPTCHA for this course? But anyways, you should not understand this. It's, it's the command binary. When you type in ls, this is what it tells the computer to do. Now, check this out. To further illustrate that this is indeed a file, I'm going to do something with it or to it. I'm going to delete it. You can delete files, so let's delete this file. Now, first, you got to back it up. So, new command time. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to clear things out. I'm going to back up my ls command, or rather, I'm going to copy it. So here we go, new command, cp. cp stands for copy. And that's pretty much what it means. No further explanation needed. So after cp, we'll reference the file we want to copy, so ls, space, and then the file we want to copy it to. I'll name it, I don't know, network chuck. You can name it whatever you want. Ah, can't do it, permission denied. How do we fix that? Well, sometimes in Linux, you have to say please. I mean, not really, but kind of. To give ourselves permission real quick for this one command, we'll type in the sudo command before our command. So sudo cp ls network check. Now we will end up covering what sudo means or sudo, but for right now, just know we weren't allowed to use the copy command in this directory. We didn't have the permissions, but by using the sudo command, we can pretend to be the root or the admin user for just that one command and we can run it. So let's try it out totally worked. So here's what we did. We have the ls command still there, but we also have a new command. It's just network chuck. It's because we copied the binary contents of ls to a new file named network chuck. And if we try to use that command, what do you think will happen? Let's try it out. Network chuck. It's the ls command. <laughs> it's, that's kind of cool, right? Anyways, let's delete the ls command. We can do that. Let me clear my screen once more. New command time. The command will be rm. Very simple two letter commands right now. rm stands for remove. And much like the copy command, no explanation necessary. It removes crap, it removes stuff. So I'll say remove ls. Now, as you may imagine, we'll also need sudo permissions to remove this. So I'll go to the beginning of my command and type in sudo. So sudo rm ls, and it's gonna go away. Say bye. It's gone. So now, what do you think will happen if we type in ls? Let's try it. ls. Nope, it's gone, but not a big deal. Like we still have network chuck, don't we? It still does the same thing, so we're good. <laughs> but for real, to return it back to normal, all we gotta do is sudo copy once more, just cp, right? We wanna copy the contents of network chuck to a new file named ls. Now, if we type in ls once more, ah, we're back, we're good. Now let's talk about Ben again. Ben, he's got all the essential command binaries like we talked about. Things like the commands we just learned, cp, copy, rm, remove, and even cat, there he is. Which also means we can cat cat. <laughs> let's try it out. Cat, cat, <laughs> and we just catted cat. Anyways, let's move on. So I'm gonna cd dot dot, or cd forward slash to get back to our root. Let's clear things out once more, and let's list the contents once more of root. So we talked about Ben, the, the Ben directory. He's awesome, but there's also another one over here called sben, or I like to refer to it as super Ben, Ben with a cape on. Now super Ben is just like Ben, but he's a bit more special. You see super Ben has special commands that only administrators would use to administer the system. Let me show you. Let's jump into super Ben. So cd sben. And if we ls inside superbin or list as contents, we'll see some cool commands, some top secret commands that only admins can use. We'll take a look at one and actually use it real quick. Let me scroll to the top here. Ah, here we go. Add user. What do you think that does? <laughs> Wild guess. It's gonna add ourselves a user. So let's do that real quick. Gonna clear my screen and we'll do sudo because this is a special command. We'll need please. Please <laughs> add user and then the username. Now this is new command time. I forgot to say it, new command time. I'm gonna create superbin. I feel like he should have a presence right now. So sudo add user super Ben, and it's creating. We'll give a password to super Ben, give him a full name, super Ben, skip the rest of the stuff. Super Ben is alive, he's here. We added a user. But anyways, that's what you see in sbin, super Ben commands. Let's get back out of there, cd dot dot. 
and clear my screen once more. Let's do ls and see what we're working with again. Now we're still gonna talk about commands for a bit. We're not quite done. Ben had our essential commands. Super Ben had our super essential commands, but now we're gonna jump into our user directory. Let's jump in there real quick. So cd user, usr, type in ls while we're there. And notice something kind of strange. It might throw you off. Inside the usr directory or the user directory, we also have a bin and an s bin. Huh? What's going on here? Something's up. Let's take a look inside. So we'll cd into bin, but inside the user directory. Let's ls that. Hmm. Looks like a lot of the same things, doesn't it? Like, is there an ls here? Yep. So same commands here. Let's jump back for a second, cd dot dot, and then jump into sbin here inside the user directory. Let's ls that. Yep, seems to have the same commands here too. What's going on? It seems like we have some imposters here. Like, which one's the real one? Bin and root or bin in the user directory? The answer is both, they're both real. There's actually a pretty interesting history as to why we have two locations. I'm not gonna talk about it here, but it all comes down to hard drive space. Look it up. But essentially the bin and the super bin directories in the user directory are the same as the bin and s bin in the root directory. Now bin and s bin in the user directory will typically have more commands there, but you will see a ton of overlap here. So that begs the question, when we use the ls command, are we using the command stored in bin or in user bin? We can actually find out. You wanna try it? Let's try it out. New command time. Go ahead and clear your screen with me here. We're gonna type in the command which. It's gonna help us figure out which is it. <laughs> is it in bin or is it in user bin? So type in which and then right after that, ls. Hit enter. Ah, so it's the ls in user bin. If we which cat, it's also in user forward slash bin. Which, if you didn't catch on what which is doing, I feel like I'm saying which too much. You can use which to find out where your command binaries live. So I can actually which that command I made earlier. Which network chuck. So that's pretty cool and that's extremely handy. So anyway, so let's um, get back to our user directory, cd dot dot. Let's ls once more. So again, here in our user directory, we have bin and super bin, carbon copies, but a bit more power. We also have a local directory, which you can hardly see. Let me back up there. Our local directory, which similar to bin and super bin will store command binaries. But it's here that you'll wanna store the command binaries that you might create. Anyways, let's move on. The user directory also has some fun stuff like libraries that the command binaries will share. And apparently it has games. That's fun. <laughs> so we're, we're done with the user directory. Let's get out of there. CD dot dot. Let's LS once more to see our root location here. Now real quick, speed route. Boot, what is that? Files your system needs to boot. Boot files, self-explanatory. Let's move on. Var will have things like log files and also web application related files. We'll talk more about that later. Temp or TMP, temporary files. Files that go away after a system reboot or something. Another lib directory, more shared library files. Specifically things your system needs to boot. Okay, speed round done. Some more stuff. Some more key directories here in the root. First, home. Home is where you live. Home is where we live. In fact, it's where every user lives on your system. Let's take a look inside. CD home. Now let's LS there real quick. Aha, two homes. One is our home and then one, hey, Superben has a home too. If we CD into Superben and LS his stuff, ah, there's his house. All right, we're, we're on welcome here. Let's get out of here. Let's get back to our root. Now every Linux system has a root user, but we didn't see a home for the root. Where does he live? Because he wasn't in this home, but you may have noticed that he is over here all by himself. He's special. He lives somewhere else where people can't bother him. He's kind of a recluse or a recluse. I don't know how to emphasize that. We can list the contents of root. Let's do a sudo because we'll need his special permissions to look inside his house. sudo ls root. And we're looking inside the root directory. There's all his stuff. Anyways, let's keep moving. Now earlier I mentioned that even devices in our system are files. Hard drives, printers, CD-ROMs. You wanna see them? They're right here in the dev directory. Dev stands for devices. Let's go take a look. We'll CD dev. Let's LS that sucker. Oh, a lot of weird stuff going on. <laughs> now we could spend all day here, but we're not going to. We're gonna look at one thing, VDA and VDA1. Those right now are our hard drives. They stand for virtual disks. On other Linux systems, you might see this listed as SDA or SDA1. And that's our hard drive, that's the disk, it's a file, which means we can cat that sucker. So let's do that. Now, <laughs> it's, this is gonna be a little rough. It might scare you. And I'll show you how to stop it here in a second, but we're, we're gonna do this. We're going to cat 
our drive, cat VDA. And I believe we will need pseudo permission, so I'll put a pseudo here at the beginning. Ready for this? It's gonna blow up. Ah, and it's gonna keep going. Hurry, hit control C and it stops. Yeah, whew. But yeah, that's all the binary and gobbledygook and all the stuff that your hard drive is. It's a stinking file, which is really cool and really, really weird, you know? But anyways, the dev directory, that's where devices live. Now, I also mentioned that the settings of your Linux server or your Linux computer are files. Things like your network settings are stored inside a file. You wanna see it? Let's go see it real quick. These things are stored in the ETC file, which stands for etc. officially, I think. So you might hear it referred to as the etc. file or directory, uh, but people mainly call it in the Linux world, the Etsy file, which was here first before etsy.com. So they stole the idea, but let's jump in there real quick. Let's jump into our Etsy file. So we'll see the ETC. You'll go here a lot because configuration files of your system are here, as well as some applications. They can throw some stuff in there too. If we ls the etc directory, a ton of stuff, <laughs> almost too much stuff. But let's focus on one set of configurations. Let's focus on networking. So right here, we've got our network directory. Let's jump in there. cd network. Let's ls the network directory. And we got a few things going on here, but the thing I want you to see is the interfaces file. Let's take a look at that. Let's cat that sucker. Cat interfaces. Ah, we need to say please, sudo cat interfaces. There we go. Here in a file are your network interfaces and their assigned IP addresses. This is where they're configured. Pretty cool. And if you wanted to change your network settings, you would often go into this file and just change it here. Now things do work differently on some Linux systems nowadays, but this was a common way to do it and is still the common way to do it on some systems. Now we're almost done. I know it's been a lot, but I got to cover this. I've got to, I got to show you this stuff. Let's get back to our root CD forward slash clear the screen. Two more places I want to talk about. Let's ls the root. So last two, here we go. Here we have the MNT directory and the media directory. They both do the same thing. They mount drives. If you plug in a USB flash drive into your Linux box here, it will automatically and auto magically be mounted to the media directory as a file because everything's a stinking file, remember? <laughs> so media is mainly for your system mounting things automatically for you. Whereas the MNT directory, it also has drives mounted to it, but it's drives you might mount manually. You would actually use commands to mount a drive. And again, that would be represented as a file in the MNT directory. Now, I think we covered most of it, <laughs> like almost all of it. If you're still curious about any of the remaining ones, like let's LS that real quick. There are a few we didn't talk about and maybe a few you want to review. Go check out the Hack the Box Academy right up here. They do go over most of the ones we mentioned here and some we didn't. So refer to that. Wow, <laughs> we covered so much in this video. Oh, you need coffee for this. But it was awesome, right? So we like we saw that everything, literally everything in Linux is a file. And we jumped around the different directories and looked at everything from devices to commands to configuration files. And we covered what the main directories actually are for. And that's key in learning Linux because when you are <laughs> doing stuff in Linux, when you're messing with applications, configuring things or hacking, it's important to know where stuff is and where stuff should go. And then while we were jumping around and exploring our Linux file system, which officially is called the FHS, how it's arranged, the file system hierarchy. While doing that, we learned a bunch of new commands. Things like, who am I? CP or copy, RM or remove, add user, which cat. <laughs> so we did a lot today. So here's my homework for you. I want you to first make flashcards of all these commands. I want you to commit these suckers to memory. Second, I want you to practice using these. Jump around. If you forget who you are, type in who am I? <laughs> Copy things, remove things. Be careful though. Although if you're using this hack the box lab, you can just restart it. It's fine. Witch, cat, witch cat, all kinds of stuff. Cat cat. The more you practice, the faster you'll learn Linux, the better an engineer you'll become. Now that's your homework, but I also have a challenge for you. I always have a challenge. Let's see what you got. And I'll actually have that quiz link below. The first one to get all the answers right will win a gift card to Network Chuck Coffee. So you can grab yourself some coffee or a shirt or a mug or whatever. So hurry up. Well guys, that's about it. A huge shout out again to the sponsor of the series, Hack the Box Academy. This is the structured learning platform for Hack the Box. It's where you wanna to come to learn how to hack. And also it's what you can use right now as a free lab as you go through this course. So if you haven't already signed up, I mean, what are you doing? You can practice for free right now, right now. 
And of course, don't forget to hack the YouTube algorithm today. Hit that like button, subscribe, notification bell, comment, all that stuff. Let's hack YouTube today. Ethically, of course. And yeah, that's about all I have. This was episode two of my Linux for Hackers and Everyone course. I'll catch you guys next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.